You want to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. Glory to God. Singing is my hobby. It's my life. It's my passion. It's my drive. It's my commitment. Glory to God. I can't be exhausted singing. I can't be exhausted. I can't be exhausted worshiping Him. I can't be exhausted. A lazy man cannot worship God. A lazy man cannot be a good drummer. A lazy man cannot worship God. Praise the Lord. If you want to worship God, you need to be a man of spirit and truth. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please, you may have your seat. If you want to clap, clap. If God has given you hands, clap. Glory to God. Some people may be wondering, why don't we do religious thing in this church? Because God hates religion. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? God hates religion. God detests religion. This service is a service of worship and wealth. The goal this morning is to show you the enormous power that is resident in worship and how it connects your wealth. My goal also this morning is to show you what worship really means. Because a lot of us have a misconstrued knowledge of worship. If you worship is singing, worship is a very slow song. Why praise is a fast song. I know some of you think that way, right? If they ask you what is worship, you say worship is that song you sing slowly. <laughs> if I ask you what's a praise song, you say praise is that song you sing fast and you dance. If I ask you again, what's the difference? In worship, you don't dance, you cry. But in praise, you dance. Another difference, you tell me, in worship, you lie down on the ground. In praise, you jump on the roof. Praise the Lord. But none of your definition defines worship. Today, you will see what worship is. Can I hear a big amen? amen. And today, you will see what worship is not. So you know which one to start practicing from henceforth. If you practice it, your life will change. Nothing has got more transforming power than worship. I've not seen anything capable of maturing a man. If you see a child, what I mean by being a child, a child in behavior, just start worshiping. You will become mature. Anybody who you see who is very mature at young age is a worshiper. <laughs> Anybody you see at old age who is a fool is not a worshiper. If you want to know the secret to my wisdom and the secret to my maturity, the secret to my to everything you see me do, the secret is simple worship. I'm a man after God's heart. The moment you start seeking the heart of God, you start getting the heart of God. One of the things you get when you receive the heart of God is his maturity. Another thing you receive when you get the heart of God is his wisdom. Another thing you receive when you get the heart of God is God's mindset, how God thinks. And there is no better way to receive the heart of God. There is no better way to touch the heart of God except through worship. Remove worship from your life. Your life will be like any other mere man on the streets. That's why today, I'm going to do you the favor of showing you from scriptures the enormity of power that is resident in worship. The enormity of power that is resident in worship. You know the man called David? You will see why he became as prosperous, as wealthy, and as rich as he became. We are seeing a season of wealth, though. For those of you who are thinking, 
the subject of wealth is a subject of the devil. Anytime you talk about wealth, it means you're promoting Satan. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Wealth is God's idea. Wealth is God's initiative. And he wants to give it to his children. Because through prosperity, his kingdom will be spread abroad. The kingdom of God cannot be spread abroad except through what? Prosperity. If you lack money, if you lack prosperity, if you lack wealth, you cannot sponsor the gospel. The gospel is run on finance. The gospel thrives on money. And whether you know it or not, the gospel is too expensive. It's too costly. Too costly. Too costly. I know there are some of you who will be very, very angry if you are in this service and you are feeling very hot. Is that correct? You are feeling hot. You will be angry. Like, ah, ah, I didn't know the whole place is very hot, stuffy. We are even sweating. Self. We are just so hot and all that. <laughs> but guess what? You are all cooling. Is that correct? All feeling good. Let me shock you. The Holy Spirit is not the one inside the lister. What is inside the lister is money. Amen and amen. And once that list that finishes, you want another one. You don't go to the Philistine and say, I release to you the Holy Spirit. Give me the list. The, the, this. No, no, you don't do that. You don't release Holy Ghost to collect people's product. You'll be a thief. Amen. 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 What do you give to collect the diesel? It's money. And then that money is what is running the service now. You guys enjoyed your worship session, music session, praise session. The microphone was high. Everything was bubbling well the speaker was blasting giving you sound and you were enjoying and then you forgotten that those things didn't fall from heaven god didn't say i will build my church by throwing down the resources from heaven the money and he said i will build my church the gates of hell will not prevail against how will he build the church by using men and those men have to use their resources the church of god cannot be built without finances so they speak at the mic. Everything you see here, money supplied it. <laughs> so if you're saying, Pastor, I don't need money, you are blocking road for somebody who wants to be here and give us money. Amen. That chair you're sitting on, there's somebody who should have been sitting on it. You are blocking. We need to send you out of this place. So the right person can come and sit down and sponsor the kingdom. Glory to God. That's why I will keep telling you, anywhere you see people fighting the issue of money in the church, fighting the church, fighting the prosperity of the church, they are fighting God directly. You're not fighting a man. When you fight finance in the kingdom, you are telling God, let your work stop. Let this your work stop. We don't want it to advance. Let it stop. And then, Somebody did something very interesting and I bless God for that young man. Allen Onyama. Maybe you know him. An Amberian. The CEO of Elpis. He sent his fleet to go and evacuate Nigerians. About, I think he said 300 or something Nigerians or so. I don't know. From South Africa, right? Over the xenophobia killings going on in South Africa. And then people put it on the news. Everywhere on social media is making the headlines. A good Nigerian, an evil man for that matter, would do a thing like this. And people ask him, Where are the pastors? Where are the churches? Couldn't they do anything about it? To be very sincere, before that man did what he did, I thought of it. It was in my I said, Look at the opportunity for church to be marketed. This is what the Bible says in the last days, the mountain of God's house will be exalted above what? other mountains and what will happen the nations will stream into it exaltation doesn't happen with talk it's not talk that exalts people when you have money you are exalted hello the church cannot be exalted without what cooler without cooler everybody say cooler everybody say cooler you're not saying it like you know you say cooler it's money everybody say malachi hey, you need to know the language of money some of you what you know is if it's not money it's money there's a difference between money and money. Hello. If you have money, it's change you have. Amen. It's change. The one they gave you when you buy when you bought Okbei and bought uh, Okoroko and bought Kanda. It's change. They gave you change and you're calling it money. That's money. 
It's a difference between money and money. Then after money, there's another one. It's called money. Amen. Three realms of money. There's money, there's money, and there's money. Which of you? I want money. <laughs> because if you have money, you wear judge your money. <laughs> Amen. It will be buying this your cracker. Okay, everywhere. What is this? Praise God. And then it was in my heart. Before that gesture was shown. I was, God, I wish I'm the one. I wish the church at this point in time can send jets. Can send vehicles to South Africa and evacuate our people back home. And not just evacuate them. Those who have lost businesses, start businesses for them. I'm telling you the truth. Those who have no house, just build one estate somewhere like that. Within one month, finish the whole estate and give keys to people. If you know where the church will be in this nation, all the mouths speaking against the church will be shot. Shot, completely shot. Now everybody is promoting herpes. Somebody went online and said, if you are a Nigerian, especially an evil man, and you do not use herpes, you won't have peace. <laughs> I say, wow. The man is now news. That 280 million he spent, close to 300 million he spent doing that gesture he did, he's going to recover it within two months, if not more. There are things church won't have until their light shines. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? There are testimonies the church will not have until the light of the... The Bible says, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and do what? Glorify your Father which is in heaven. You don't do good works with mouths. But it's not done that way. That's why you must begin to crave God. Put wealth in my hand. On Wednesday, the service I'm going to be talking, I'm going to be teaching you on the purposes of wealth. You need to know the priorities of wealth. Because some of you think wealth is for hmm, men. Say they have built native restaurants in this town now. What are you not talking about? I will take all the chicks there. I will take all the girls there. I'm going to go and spend, man. Eat myself to stupor. Some of you think the purpose of wealth is to drive new cars. Some of you think the purpose of money is to wear new clothes. Some of you think the purpose of money is to look fresh. You see why South African girls are not angry? Some of you have not watched what South African girls are saying on TV, on social media. I have them boko boko on my phone now. There's our videos everywhere. One came out for 16 good minutes. She was talking. You know what she said? Is that South African guys stop spoiling market for us? Why are you killing the Nigerian guys? Why are you killing the Nigerians? The Nigerians are very good guys. They spend money on us. They spend money on us. South African boys are wicked. South African boys are stingy. South African guys are very, 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 very heartless. They don't treat us well. But the Nigerian guys, oh God bless the Nigerian guys. Can I ever live a day without a Nigerian guy? God bless the Nigerian guys. The Nigerian guys will buy you perfume. They, oh my God. And the Nigerian guys like to smell nice. Oh, Nigerian guys are born by queens. You need to see Nigerian. They are so handsome. Oh my God. Nigerian guys, they will spoil you. You want a car, they will take you to a car shop. They will buy you a car. If you visit a Nigerian guy in South Africa, they will make sure if they have a good car, they take you in their best car. In their Range Rover. Oh, oh and Nigerian guys know how to drive good cars. They drive good cars. They drive Ferrari, Lamborghini. They drive Marasati. They drive nice, nice cars. These guys know how to drive good cars. And oh my God, they know how to dress. Georgia money. They wear Gucci. They wear all kinds of nice blinks. Bling, blinks. Why would you want to chase the Nigerian guys away from our country? Leave them. You want us to run out of business? If a Nigerian guy doesn't have... A good car. He won't take you in his in, in inferior car. He will call his friend who has a good car to take you back home. If he doesn't have a friend that will give, you, give his good car to take you back home, he will go and hire an Uber or a taxi A very good Uber. A very good Uber. To come and take you back home. See Nigerian guys. Oh, I, when I finish what I say, eh, hey. see where Nigerian guys are putting their money. That's why they are cutting people's head now anyhow. Is that, see where they are putting their money. So some of you think the idea of money is to impress girls, right? And some people feel, ah, I need to make this money, man, to show off. All the girls will line up where I am. 
Praise the Lord. But that's not the purpose of wealth. Purpose has a wealth has a higher purpose than that. God wants you to enjoy your life quite okay. Because if you have money, God also wants it to show in your life. Amen. Amen. The Bible says He has given us all things to what? Enjoy. Even all things that pertain to life and what? Godliness. So He wants you to enjoy your life. But that place has its own place. The first reason God wants you to be wealthy is for His kingdom. Maybe you don't know that. It's for His kingdom. It's for His kingdom. Once you have missed that, you have missed everything. On Wednesday, we'll show you the order of priority. So you would follow them religiously and then you will see the amazing blessings and rewards that you enjoy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Each time there's a need in the kingdom and I think about money. Or each time I think about money, rather, I'm thinking about the need in the kingdom. I'm not thinking about myself first. Is a need in the kingdom. Is a need in the kingdom. Listen to me. The xenophobia issue in South Africa can be addressed squarely by money. You see those boys who are raging? It's money. If you're busy, if you're gainfully employed, you won't be carrying guns looking for who to kill. Is that correct? It's money. It's money. Do you know why Bibi Niger is corrupting a lot of young people? I don't know if you know Big Brother Niger. Many of you, yes, you watch it. You have fans. Or you are fans to some of those housemates. You know why they are there? For the 65 million. 65 million this year. Last year's one was the last session was what 45. The other one was what 25. The guy who won the 25 million, what's his name again? A fair, the worry guy. The guy who won the 20 45 million is who? Oh, you know these things. Miracle. And miracle is also a pilot. Are you aware? Okay. Who is gonna win this one now? Who? Who? Dasha. Who is gonna win it? <laughs> you see, everybody now the talk. If I say open one scripture and recite it without looking at the Bible, you cannot. Why are guys in BBN? Because of the money. Who says the church cannot create alternative systems? Where we will not need people to pollute themselves. People will compete Bible quiz. Do scripture debates. They will debate on biblical topics. And they will put prizes of one million. It's money that is stopping it. The guys who are doing BB Niger have the money. That's why they can sponsor it. And you can do nothing about it. You can't close BB Niger on social media. Those of you who know how to write. You're like, the devilish monster called BB Niger. Then you, another topic. Unmasking the terror of generations unborn. The impact of it. May God help your grammar in the name of Jesus. Some of you, the only place you have exploits to show is on Facebook. It's on Facebook. Facebook. You will write and still nothing gets done. Eh, eh, it's not Facebook. It's not social media. It's money media. It's money. I said, God will put wealth in your hands. I pity people who are fighting kingdom wealth. You are fighting kingdom wealth, but see the devil is using it to destroy the world. As young men, it's my desire, young men and women, my desire to see you carry tangible resources. Money, money. If you have money, we will stop dealing with crime. The kingdom will, if you have money, the kingdom way. Not Yahoo Yahoo way. And that's why you see, I love young people so much. Because the wahala of this age now, young people, everywhere, is young people. You see girls who are keeping multiple guys everywhere. Yeah, check their phone. You see all kinds of names. In the BC Range Rover. Abuja in bracket. Malaki Zenith Bank. Two. Ifani. Onishame Market. And you know the truth of the matter is that they follow it some seven every weekend they have calendar they know where they go to money is money is money i don't know if some of you are here you won't talk now and then they have multiple lines they know the one they used to call this one the way they used to call this one and they save it strangely let me tell you something i'll amuse you a little a young man 
saved a particular number on his phone. My best. And save another one. My love. And save another one. My heart. Hey. One day, this phone rang. And they all rang at the same time. The mom was in the bathroom. The wife was inside the room seeing all of them. <laughs> Praise God. Sit down, sir. Guess what happened? When the man came out of the store, that is why you are called Jehovah. The woman said, Who are those people you saved their name like that with? He said, ah, ah. Who again? He said, Look at this one, I called you. He said, It's my love. He said, ah, ah, It's my mother. He said, Your mother? It's okay. Who is this one? My meat pie. He said, ah, ah, nah. It's my only sister. My one and only sister. He said, Who is this one? My heart. He said, Don't you know your number again? It's you now. He said, Eh. See, I thought it was your side chicks. See me, side chicks. What do I have to do with side chicks? After a while, the phone rang again. The wife picked it. Guess what she saw this time? Guess what she saw this time? Eh? Not my darling. Should I tell her she saw this time? Eh? Headache. <laughs> so when the thing was, he said, ah, who is headache? He picked it. He said, oh, it's my boss in the office. This boss can give me headache. So I saved it with headache. The woman said, oh, yeah, oh. Is that why you say with headache? He said, it's a headache to me. Little did she know that the headache was a side chick. So guys have devised new methods now to use and confuse their wives. Headache is a side chick. But it made the wife confused, thinking that the headache is a boss. So he saved the family names with sweet, sweet names. So any day the woman see my love, she will feel is the mother calling. My heart, oh, is the sister calling. Any day he sees headache, he will think it's the boss calling. And she will dare not pick the boss call. Are you getting what I'm saying? Not knowing that it is the main side chick. So the man can go to sleep and then enjoy his sleep. The phone will ring. Headache is calling. The woman will not pick. Say, is it not this headache of a boss that is calling? Now, not knowing that it's the original girl. <laughs> the original girl you're running away from. Glory to God. Hey, I hope you're not like that. The way you're looking at me this morning, I'm surprised because, you know, when you're opening people's data, it's the way they look at you. I feel I'll be catching you too. Now, let's go to the scripture. Matthew chapter 4. I'll show you something that the devil is a worshiper. And he loves to be worshipped. And people who worship him receive things from him too. The devil is constantly craving your worship. Which is why he was not afraid to ask Jesus to fall down and worship him. <laughs> that is why you see, the world is upside down today. I saw a video on YouTube. People were spraying money in a party. If you see dollars, guys were spraying. Wearing bling bling. Okay. And then you need nobody to tell you these guys are ritualists. Or these guys are Yahoo boys. These boys have sold their soul to the devil. Making money illegally. And squandering it anyhow. You need to see girls dancing, shaking. Shake, huku, flavor. Shaking all kinds of nonsense. This one will carry dollars and slap a power. This one will come and do her own like this. You will put it inside the breast. Let me tell you, if you're a lady here. And you fall for things like that. You have reduced yourself too cheaply. Too cheaply. Too cheaply. Too cheaply too cheaply and i say you see the issue god wants to give you wealth but the devil knows if you run to god and do the things he says you should do you will receive the wealth so he now creates an alternative for you which is run to me and i will give you the same wealth so matthew chapter 4 verse 8 see where the subject of worship look at it Again, the devil took him. You see, if you read from the first verse down, after Jesus had fasted and prayed, the first temptation the devil brought to Jesus was what? If you know you are the son of God, do what? Turn this stone to what? Bread. The second temptation was what? He took him to the what? Mountains. And told him to do what? 
to jump. For God will give his angels charge over you lest you dash your feet on the stone. And then Jesus said, no, 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 no. I won't try because you shall not tempt the Lord, your God. The last temptation he brought now is the one that a lot of people are falling for. And what's that temptation? Again, he took him, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and what? Their glory. Can we read it together? I want to go. And he took him again. The devil took him. Want to go? And showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. You see, Satan can also show people glory. Satan can also show people kingdoms. He can show you cars. He can show you houses. You know one thing about the devil? When he shows you things like this, he's contesting and competing for your soul. Whatever the devil gives you, he doesn't give you to satisfy you. He gives you to create a momentary satisfaction and collect the main thing you have, which is your soul. That's why the Bible says, what shall he profit a man if he does what? Gains the whole world and does what? Lose his soul. He gains the whole world, lose his soul. Gains the whole world, but lose his soul. What does it profit that man? What does it profit that man? The devil knows that wealth has power to exchange for your soul. If the devil was not scared to come to Jesus and bargain for his soul with wealth, is he you he will not come to? A young lady died on my street. And then, <laughs> people were crying down money, shouting down money, crying up and down. And I was wondering, ah, is this girl that whatever? And a few days later, just last week, was the office of a very prominent figure in the state. And then we're talking, and I mentioned it technically to her. I said, look at what is going on. A lady just died at a very young age like that. He said, which lady is that? I mentioned the girl's name. He said, that is my niece. I said, your niece? How? He said, it's my niece. And then she sat me down and told me the whole story. He said, that lady has never listened for one day. He said, the mother of the lady is so poor. Very, very poor. She went to school through struggle. When she finally graduated from, you know, and then came to her back, I told her, you know, you are now in so and so sector. I don't want to mention the sector. So and so sector. Take it serious, though. God has helped you. Don't uh, mingle yourself the way you used to mingle before. Be serious. Make sure you're disciplined. The ladies have had auntie. But guess what? She will never sit down one place. That's what the auntie was telling me. Is it is from here to here? Is it any person who stops Range Rover? She jumps inside. Anybody who stops Lincoln Navigator, she jumps inside. He said, one day she called the lady's office. He said, I've been hearing news about you. He said, everywhere you are the one going with all kinds of men, following politicians, following all kinds of boys around. He said, be careful. One day you will enter Wahala. You will know what is happening to you. She kept moving and moving and moving like that. And then you know what is shocking? She even got married at one point. This kind of marriage, you just marry anyhow. No real whatever. Got married, got pregnant for the guy. The marriage was, the pregnancy was growing to a point. One morning she woke up and then it was a severe headache she had. Very severe headache. Little did people know that the lady had already contacted the virus. The H to the I to the V. And then they took her to the hospital. Thinking it was maybe the pregnancy. It was headache. Because that thing destroys your immune system. It scatters everything. Took the lady. <clears throat> headache, headache, headache. Before you noticed it, ah. The girl gave up. Died on the spot. The mother came to back looking, looking for the lady. When they called the auntie and said, look, this girl is there though. Ah, she said, how? He took the lady to the hospital where the lady was and then confirmed it was true from there moved the lady to the mortuary and then when they got to the mortuary the woman came to town and called this auntie i said where's my daughter i heard that she's dead he said come to the susan so hospital she came to feather they took her to the mortuary and by the time they got there the morticians were already dissecting the lady's tummy removed the baby inside and started putting tissues and all those bobo tibo inside of it because of and then if that girl were to be asked before she died how did you end your life that way? She will tell you money. If you see what the lack of money has done, the devil uses your need as his advantage. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? He says, Satan uses your what? Need as his what? Advantage. He says you have a need, just like he saw that Jesus was hungry. Are you seeing that? How come he didn't come when Jesus was full? He came when he was hungry. The devil will knock at your door when he notices you have needs. Ah, fine girl. How you find like this that they broke? And then all the guys in town will be packing their fleet of jeeps. You don't know what's in the carrier. One night can destroy your future. 
Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? You know, I'm not a conventional preacher. I teach you the real thing. Because that's what is going on with young people now everywhere. Girls everywhere falling for all kinds of things. Like not everybody who is in the car is a human being. Okay, look how it's going on in Port Harcourt now. Within one month, three dead bodies found in three different hotels the same way they died. Have you not been seeing it on social media? What happened just two days ago? You didn't see it? Another young lady. Why girls do they hear something? When I know they hear. When I know they hear. You saw the first one happen. A young lady who went to sleep with a man in a hotel. They took the two breasts out. Took whatever other thing out. And then they tied. They will always tie one white hanky on the neck. And then tie the girl's hand and the girl's leg. The second one happened the same way. Now this third one happened two days ago. The same way. Yet some girls will not listen. The devil knows the power of money. And it's worse with ladies because you always have needs. Hairstyle. Then those of you who God didn't dash small bomb bomb. You want to add additional plastic to get you want to do shape. You who are you trying to impress? Be original. It doesn't matter how your bots look, carry it with pride. God has designed a king for you who loves it. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? See my wife, for instance. She's skimpy. She's adding now, gradually anyway. She's skimpy. Slim in nature. If she went around looking for how to go and get extra in a uh, bomb bomb. Amen. And then extra breasts. Extra everything. That would have been a fake life. But she lived her original life. I like him like that. She fine like that. If she was horrible. If she was horrible. Do you know the Lord would have been my strength? People saw my pre-wedding pictures when I was snapping pre-wedding. Show you saw on my back. There's what I will carry on my back. My spinal cord will go. God gave me what I can handle. Amen. Amen. Some things you carry on your back before you notice it, you're going down, going down low. Six feet is where you're heading for. Any day she says, Baby, carry me. I, we, I just carry. And I'll be for me, man. I'll be for me, man. For me, man. I'll be for me, man. What if they give me their some? Amen. Praise the Lord. If they give me, if they give me, I say, If they give me. I mean, I want to talk, talk, talk to you guys. Amen. If they give me, there's somebody I'm looking for in the church. If they give me that woman to carry. You know, amen. Where will I start from? Now I go carry me. You know how we say, baby, carry me. I'll come say, baby, carry me. Now. Praise God. But you know the way she is. There's somebody who likes her like that. Loves her too bad. If it's, if it's not that way, God is deliberate about you. He created you deliberate. For someone, he knows. If you're not like this, you no, know, when you go to the restaurant, see there are sorted food. And, so they, because, and you don't go to a restaurant eating everything. There's some people who like, I, I was in a restaurant in Enugu one time. How many of you know Tachosa? Glory to God. I was at Tachosa, just walked in there. One guy just, run, if you see the Ridge Rover he came with, heavy car, see this guy heavy, just running. When he go, when he go, I told I say, all come in a while. Seven wraps. Guess what I came to buy? Fried rice, plantain, chicken, ice cream. As my white man, I be. But this one I came in original. I don't eat that boo. So when you go to a restaurant and you see assorted food, people are coming to buy what they want. That's how God created you, ladies. Assorted breeds. You are all assorted. And you have people who are going to sort you out. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, like, they, they, they are designed already, waiting for you to show. Don't go and be carrying this rejection and inferiority complex. Some of you carry. Who are you trying to impress? As someone I see, if you see the eyelash, it's not this, if you see eyelash, The eyelash is from here to where this guy is still. And then Richie here, it is now curved like this. 
And the girl was looking like this. If you see her, then the whole eyes was blinking and going. I packed my car. Not to talk to her, just to observe a little. I just spat. I touched my wife. I said, what are those things on her eyes? He said, it's fashion now. It's eyelash. I said, wait. I said, wind down that glass. She said, I look. Hey, you see again. And when I see it, I know it is wound in the soul. It is rejection. The girl is not complete. She feels threatened. And some of you, who, you will buy shoes not because you want to wear shoes. Somebody wore it. So make it not be saying only how they wear. You do hairstyle, even if it's not your kind of hair. You do it because you want to pepper one lady who did it. Be content. Be content. Girls who will not allow their skin to be the way it is. They carry cream and finish everything. Uh, they put uh, Tony Max inside. Wait, what are their names? Ka- is it Carol White? Carol White. And they mix it with one uh, hair lotion. Mix it with all kinds of mixture. When they rub the thing, you see all the vein. Blue vein, green vein, yellow vein, red vein. And there's no kind of color that will not be coming. They patch, patch everywhere. They start looking like Bob Risky. Be who you are. If you don't have gap tooth, don't go and create one. What is it concerning me with gap tooth? If I have gap tooth, do you know how I will look? Maybe like a gorilla. But God allow me this way. He knows this is how I'm going to come out perfect. If you have gap tooth and your own is maybe four teeth missing and that's how God created you. Your own gap tooth is now white. Give God thanks. Don't go and looking for filler. If you feel it, you know what you look like. Amen. I've seen ladies who have white gap tooth if they laugh here. You were like, wow, that's so beautiful. If you don't have dimple like your own, it's beautiful. I just saw it now. And you have up and down too. If you know how you would have looked if those things were closed, God created you like that. And it's beautiful. You see the way your hair is looking like this. <laughs> Bro, thank you for coming to church with Miro. It's natural Miro. If you don't have money to buy your wife mirror, look at it here. <laughs> wife just wants to make her say, honey, come or get me the mirror. <laughs> Why you? Amen. If you start keeping her like me, maybe you're not going to be as fine as I am. Everybody is fine in his way. Don't let Satan use your needs or what you don't have to exploit your soul. That's what we are telling you. That's what he tried to do to Jesus. And he said to him, all these things I will give to you if you do what? Fall down and do what? Worship. So the devil knows the efficacy and the power of worship. He knows that worship has a connection with prosperity. He knows that worship has a power to make you rich. And he offers you the opportunity to get what he has. That's why every occultic man is rich. Because they worship the devil. And worshiping the devil is not just about falling down and standing up. It comes with sacrifices. Worship actually is sacrifice. Most of you don't know what it is. You're going to know it today. So if you think he's crying, he's singing, that's the most elementary part of worship. True worship comes with true prosperity. You can sing from now to tomorrow and still be broke. The real worship make it a man rich. When you go to the devil now to get money, do you go there singing? Satan, you are highly lifted up. There is no one like you. No. You see, what is his name? Uh, what's this guy's name who sang Fallen Angel? Chris Brown. That Illuminati guy. You see him singing songs. You think it's a song that's making him rich. It's not the song. There are all that Chris Brown activates. He does the real worship before singing. The real is somebody here on up saying the real worship is not singing. Or today you will see it. When you say I'm a worshiper, I'm a worshiper, it's not singing. You can sing from now to tomorrow, I'm still be broke. The real worship starts from a heart that is sacrificed to God, a life that is a burnt offering to God. And then once God collects 
a burnt offering of your heart, a burnt offering of your life, he can collect anything you have without any problem. That's the real worship. That's the real worship. That's the real worship, which you're about to see in a few minutes and we'll close. So, the people of the other side of the world understand what worship is. Because Satan is the one who led worship in heaven. He knows worship. You can't beat him in a game. The guy had music in him. Look, Satan didn't need to open his mouth to sing. Any part of Satan's body he shakes is an, is a, is, is, is an instrument. Then he was called Lucifer. Any part of his body that shakes, music plays. If Satan blinks his eyes, it's a music sound that you hear. If he moves his feet, it's a music sound that you hear. If he shakes his body, it's a music sound that you hear. He was the cherub of God that was in charge of worship. He was the one that was burning incense for God in heaven. So on earth, now let me tell you, he has not lost that same power. He knows the power of worship. And everyone who worships him, he makes so. But he makes you to destroy you. That's what he was telling Jesus. He said, follow me. I've seen people who left church, left God, and followed Satan because they wanted money. Native doctors, ritualists. Some sacrifice their mother, some sacrifice their auntie, some sacrifice their uncle, sacrifice their father, sacrifice even their children just because they want to make money. In our own kingdom, the blessing of the Lord make it rich. It has no sorrow. Because when you follow Satan, you'll be getting trouble every day. He collects your uncle, collects your auntie, collects your mother, collects your children. When you think he has already finished collecting, the next month he will collect. He collects your health. Sometimes what he gives you will tell you it will only last you for seven years. After that, you'll die and meet me here in hell. If you make a deal with the devil, he will deal with you. Both here on earth and in the world to come. Never sign a deal with Satan. I want to say to you, no matter where life puts you. I don't know I'm talking like this this morning. I believe it's for somebody here. Maybe somebody has made up his mind. I'm done with all this nonsense brokenness. I will go the other way now. And it's everywhere. There was a time people were stealing people's pants. Just to make money. They carry people's pants and go to a native doctor. To make money. Now look at it going on in Port Harcourt everywhere. Girls' private parts are missing and they die in the hotel. Don't follow any man you don't know to any hotel again. In fact, if you know the person. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? If not, you may be the next victim. That same money you want to get from the devil, God will give it to you. I say, God will give it to you. If you obey the principles you will see this morning, that principle of worship, you will receive wealth like no man has ever received. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. What did Jesus say to him? Look at what he said. And that's what I say to all of you right now. Then Jesus said to him, away with you. Another word is to hell with you, my friend. Satan. For it is what? Written. Somebody said, for it is written. Shout it loud and clear. For it is written. You shall worship the Lord your God and him alone shall you simple and short QED you shall worship the Lord your God and him alone shall you serve there is no assistant God there is no alternative God you are the main G you are my main G but I have another, you know, other G's, small, small G's. You're the main God. <laughs> but Lord, I have other small, small gods. In case you are busy, I just consult them. Yes, now people do it. And that's the word I'm saying to everyone of you here. Never bow to Satan. You may never carry that head up again. Bowing to him is to get your head off. Some of you may be having that temptation. Yeah, you should go and bow, bow small. Just bow small. If I they go too much, bow small. 
genesis chapter 22 let me show you the first time worship was mentioned in the bible and where the whole wealth of the of the whole earth came from the wealth of the whole world we sing abraham's blessings are mine i want to show you where it came from the wealth of the jews where did it come from abraham chapter 22 verse 1 can we read together one to go now it came to pass please can you give me your voices like military men one to go now it came to pass after these things that god tested abraham and said to him abraham and he said here i am verse number two then he said take now your son your only son isaac whom you love and go to the land of moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which i shall tell you now pause everybody say worship is burnt offering somebody say worship is burnt offering say it again say worship is burnt offering you didn't say like you know it said worship is burnt offering now this is the secret i want to show you go down again you can see that sir go down again so abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his what young men with him and isaac his son and he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which god had told him the next verse then on the third day abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off the place of the burnt offering and then what happened and abraham said to his young men stay here with the donkey the lad and i we go yonder and do what i thought they were going to kill the guy so what god told abraham was go and worship hey, hey. he said give your son to me as burnt offering abraham understood it as worship when he got to a place where he saw the mountain of Pharaoh, he told his young men stay here i'll go with the lad and go and do what and worship and guess what and we will come back to you somebody must be telling me pastor that means abraham was lying no he was not lying sir see what the bible says i beseech you brethren present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to god which is your reasonable service please let me ask you have you ever seen a sacrifice that is alive oh am i in the right church this morning you are trying to insulate the anointing on me have you ever seen a sacrifice that is alive but the bible says, present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto me which is your reasonable service living sac- i think when you sacrifice something it dies i thought when you sacrifice something it dies how come this time god is saying present these bodies to me living but sacrifice living sacrifice living sacrifice living sacrifice holy and acceptable to me i now added which is your reasonable service and how what is your reasonable worship so abraham was not making a mistake when he said i and the lad we will go yonder and worship and when we finish worshiping we will come back to you he didn't say i will come back to you god said to abraham go and kill isaac that means after killing isaac abraham was supposed to come back alone somebody even get what i'm saying abraham was made to come back alone how come he said we will come back because there's a sacrifice that is living Mm. Hmm. oh i wish i was preaching this message somewhere else i wish i was preaching it somewhere else where people can really understand what i'm saying 
He said, we will come back. So after all, what Abraham and Isaac were going to go and do was to worship. That burnt offering is worship. That sacrifice is worship. The sacrifice is not just sacrifice. It's worship. You will see mysteries this morning. In a very short while, you will see this. And then, I'll show you another thing very speedily. It's the first time the word worship was mentioned in the Bible. In the book of Genesis chapter 22. Let me show you something that would back up a little of what I've said. Second Samuel chapter 24. Verse 24. Let me show you a connection to Mount Moriah where Abraham offered Isaac. I'll still come back to that same scripture and show you the blessing that followed suit when Abraham obeyed God. Can I prophesy to somebody? This season, every instruction you obey will bring you blessings. I did not hear your amen. Amen. I have a feeling in my heart this is the time for you to pack cars. I'm, I'm not speaking like I'm a lecturer. I'm speaking under the anointing. This is a period for some people to build houses. This is a period for some people to buy land. This is a period for people's bank account to swear without limits. I say it will happen this season in the name of Jesus Christ. Have your seat for a few seconds. See this. Go to verse 24. Story of a young man. Hello, listen to me. Follow me. You may miss me. I'm laying a foundation here. Remember, we're talking about Abraham and his worship to God. You're going to see what that worship did. Not just for Abraham. You're going to see that worship laid the foundation for what has been happening even up to this day. That same worship abraham gave god was what laid the foundation for Jesus' coming we'll get there i want you to mark the word mount moriah and see something very significant about that mountain where abraham went to worship now see this this is a man called king david his enemies had struck again and this time they have killed people wiped out everything destroyed families, destroyed people's wealth and, Abraham, and, and David is crying. He's weeping and saying oh Lord God, why is all this thing befalling us? Why are you punishing the people? If you must punish people, please don't punish them, punish me because it is me that is responsible for this nonsense that is going on here. Punish me. Stop destroying these guys. And then, see what happens in verse 24. Then the king said to Arauna, that's David, no, but I will surely buy it from you for oh God, I wish I can start it from verse because of time. Start from verse 20. What I'm trying to show you is the connection between worship and prosperity. Because when David inquired of the Lord, what should I do now for this people to be saved? He received an instruction to offer God a burnt offering, to offer God worship. And guess what? He went to go and buy a property just to worship God. See from verse 20. Now, Aruna looked and saw the king and his servants coming towards him. So, Aruna went out and bowed before the king with his face on the ground. Look at this. This is David trying to look for solution so that the killings of his people will stop. See what he did. Then, Aruna said, why has my lord, the king, come to his servants? Are you getting the flow now? Are you getting the flow? And David said, to buy the threshing floor from you to build an altar to the lord. Helekepa. What do you do on an altar? Sacrifice. Have you heard the word altar of worship? People say altar of worship, but they think altar of worship is altar of singing. You don't sing on altar. You worship on the altar. Worship is beyond singing. He said, I've come to buy the whole threshing floor. This whole mountain, this whole field, I came to buy it so I can build God there an altar. That's why if you've ever heard me carefully talking about worship, I use words like, worship is not truly really complete until there's giving. Hmm. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? I'm a worshiper, I'm a worshiper, I'm a worshiper. Does it mean I'm a singer? I'm a singer. It's not about how you feel. Some people have styles of worship. But they are still broke. He 
minister you want to manufacture, manufacture. That's not worship. Worship is burnt offering. Worship is living sacrifice. The first sacrifice is you, 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 you. How can somebody who went to be sacrificed come back alive? Because that is the sacrifice. You first. He said, I am the lad. We will go and worship and we will come back. But God said, go and kill your son. <laughs> you are first the sacrifice of worship. Once you have been given, anything else you have will be given. Once you have been given, anything else you have will be given. You can't withhold nothing once you've been given. Let me ask you a question. Have you seen a man who is dead? Yet he is a billionaire. He has 100 fleet of cars. Eh? 100 fleets of jeep. He has private jet. When that man dies, does he go away with anything? All the wealth he has, give him. Is that correct? Is that correct? When a man dies, does he own anything again? Okay. I have some properties. Land properties. Nice vehicles. If I'm no more now, will I go with them? What will happen to them? My children will start driving them. My wife will start cruising it. Friends may even collect some. My siblings may even collect some. Is that correct? Because I'm gone. Only me will go. That is what worship means. When God collects you as bond offering, everything you have goes. Oh. Oh. Can they, can they catch it? I, once my life has been offered to God as the item of worship first, God, take my life. I've given it all out to you. That's being a worshiper. I'm now the living sacrifice. That is a sacrifice that is dead but alive. Dead. 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 Nothing again I have moves me. Anything you want at this point, collect it. But you know what about that kind of sacrifice? You don't die. don't die that's why isaac didn't die he died but he didn't die living sacrifice the reason some of you have not yet entered the mainstream of god's great riches for you is you have not yet offered your life until your life is offered hey a stingy man who was alive dragging everything dragging his house withholding his money the minute he dies he drags nothing again Hello? I said the most stingy man. The moment he dies, he drags nothing again. That thing has been withholding like this. Once he dies, even in the hospital, why he's holding that money? He dies, somebody will just come and collect it. Easy. That's how God wants us to be. Once we become living sacrifice, God can receive anything in our hands without our shaking. This when people finish worshipping and then when giving is mentioning they start frowning. They didn't worship. They didn't meet God. They didn't die. God was teaching Abraham something by telling him, offer Isaac on the altar. He wasn't saying kill the boy, literally. He was teaching him for you to please me, for you to worship me. Now you go die first. You have to die. Then I can collect anything you have in your hands. Do you see how I feel in this service? I feel like there's nothing God wants that I can give him. Nothing. Nothing. It's not singing. It's a heart that is burnt. It's a life that is burnt. It is self that is dead. It is a will that is surrendered. That is worship. I am redefining worship for you. As Abraham. We will go yonder and worship. Did they go there and start singing? Great are you, Lord. You are greatly to be praised. Greatly to be. And then the wood and everything is just there staring at them. No. You mean they reached there? He tied the boy, put him there. And then what is shocking is this. Why they were on the journey? If you read down, it got to a point. Hey, Akabadada. Sorry, sir. Pause on this one. Go back to Genesis chapter 22. Let me show you what Isaac said to his father. And it was shocking. Isaac asked the father, Daddy, 
We have the wood and the fire and the kerosene and everything you need for the sacrifice. One thing is lacking. Where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Can you find it for me quickly? Verse 7, 8. Find it. Quickly, sir. The anointing is still steaming. I don't want you to go down. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father. My uh, uh, my father, and he said, here I am. This guy is confused. You, you better leave that place if you don't know what you're doing there. Verse 7. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, my father, and he said, here I am, my son. Then he said, look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? The son didn't even understand it. But he understood it finally. That was why he didn't complain. Hey. Verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a bond what? Offering. What it means is this. You cannot release and not receive. You cannot release and not receive. Abraham knew as a matter of certainty. The moment we obey God, obey this instruction, God will provide for himself. He will provide for himself. He will provide for himself. The lamp for a burnt offering. Now let me shock you all. There's an arm mystery God showed me there. The Bible said the Lord will provide by himself. He said he will provide for himself. That means you don't choose what you offer. God chooses it. Do you hear what I'm saying? Have you ever gone to an Oboni shrine or gone to an occult group and then you are negotiating with the chief priest? This is what I will offer. What do they do? I want money, Baba. I want money, Grandmaster. He said, who is the one you love the most? It's my mother. That's the one the Grandmaster wants. Do you go negotiating it? Go and watch your Nigerian movie. Watch all of all those guys. You see, it's consistent. Blood money is the same thing. Billionaire's club. Go and watch those movies. It's the same thing. There's never a court where you negotiate what you want to give. Somebody's here, I'm saying. That's why when true worship has been done, I can be here preaching now. I say, you want to give God one million? Come out here. <laughs> When you have met God at the place of worship, God can tell you, my friend, it's 20 million you're giving. You come and say, Pastor, you said 1 million, but God told me 20 million. Because you met him first hand at the Mount of Moriah. At the Mount of Encounter. This is not somebody trying to cajole you. That's where we are missing it in the body of Christ. We use our brain to follow God. But this is not a brain thing. Abraham knew it. God will choose. He, that, what he meant is, I'm not even sure you are the lamb for the sacrifice. Because it means you don't qualify. We may get to that mountain now and God will change the item of sacrifice. There are times I felt like that. God, I'm giving one million. When I was going back, God said, are you crazy? Come on, go and give five million. I said, hey, God, what is going on? That's why the Bible says, as many who are led, by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You will soon see it again. I will show you that one. But in a different scripture. You will now see worship is beyond what you think it is. And Abraham said, my God, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. No argument again. The son now understood it. And then the next verse. Verse 9. Verse 9. Verse 9. Then they came to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar. Are you seeing altar again? He built an altar of worship. And Abraham built an altar there. And placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac his son. And laid him on the altar upon the wood. See, that thing you call your son. Your only son. Is what God is looking for. Mm. Mm. That's the item of worship. That's your only son. It can be your beauty. You know what allow you to serve God. God is looking for it. That's your only son. 
can be that thing you feel without this thing, I can't do anything, my friend. I can't do without this. God is looking for it. Because God does not want anything to take the place he should take in your life. Hello? God does not want anything to take the place he should take in your life. So he first of all asks for a release of what you have before he releases what he has. Is it not shocking that God couldn't release Jesus until Abraham released Isaac? Hey, there, there. This was where Abraham laid the foundation. So you think God first released Isaac, released Jesus to die. No, Abraham was the first that released his son to die. And then God now released Jesus. That's why you will see it in Galatians chapter 3 that all the Gentiles of the world were marked for salvation through Abraham. That God swore with his name. Because you did not withhold the only son, I would withhold mine. Abraham made God change his mind about what God couldn't do. That human beings can affect God's mind here on earth. Can affect God's decision from earth. By their sacrifice of worship. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. What the shock is that the son didn't say, Daddy, why? What have I done wrong? Have you not asked yourself? How come this boy didn't complain? Daddy, you were killing me. So you hate me like I didn't know you were Boko Haram, sir. He said he stretched to kill him. For real. For real to kill him. And the boy did not complain because he had heard nothing given in the hands of God dies. My father said the Lord shall provide himself. Shall provide for himself a what? Living sacrifice. If I give God a car, I don't give that car feeling that car is gone. That car is coming. Oh, car, day, bad, da, da. I said that car is coming. I don't give God anything monetarily or whatever. My time and lose it. You know when I give God my time in my young age, I reap it in old age. Why will I die? Why will I not have gray hair? Why will I not see my children's children? I am giving God the sacrifice of time investing in his kingdom and you think I will die young? I will reap all this time in time. I said before eternity, in time. I will reap it in 90 years. 100 years. 120. I will reap it. And then when I'm reaping it then, eh, you still see me struggle. Agile. That's why the Bible says, remember the Lord your God in the days of your youth. You don't want to die young, but remember God now. You will live old. You will be so old, you will see children's children's children. Because nothing enters God's hand and dies. Nothing. Your money cannot enter God's hand and die. Your property, your land cannot enter God's hand and die. Your phone cannot enter God's hand and die. Your car keys can't enter God's hand and die. Learn it, church, is the pathway to prosperity. You need revelation to get this. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know. So God does not know until he tests you. He doesn't know. I love you, Lord. I God is in I hear. Yes, who are you deceiving? And he's looking. No, the Bible says where your treasure is. That's where your heart is. So he's checking. It's your man that is talking. I want to see your treasure. What do you treasure? What do you love the most? That money you would hold in. You so stingy. You can't give it. That time you can't give God. That sacrifice you can't give God. Sacrifice of your heart. Sacrifice of yourself. Sacrifice of everything. Sacrifice of your intellect. Sacrifice of your power. You are going to say it in this meeting this morning. What God demands from you. You can't give it to God. But your mouth is saying, I really care about you. Oh, sweet spirit. My Lord and my friend. My everything. Oh, I adore you. God is here looking at you. He's not even crossing the ceiling. How I know you love me is not by your mouth. 
Hello. Don't be telling your wife, I love you. Baby, I love you. Baby, I love you. Baby, I love you. And then your pocket has not said it. That love is in doubt. Baby, I love you. Baby, I love you. Eh, eh. Where your heart is, is where your treasure will be. And he said, now I know that you fear God. Since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Can I shock you, sir? Somebody asked me, sir. God spoke to Abraham and said he should go and take his son and kill. When Abraham was about to kill, God didn't talk. It was an angel who spoke. And this one said, why did God not speak? Why did he send an angel to speak? Because God was somewhere crying. You didn't hear what I said. God saw what Abraham did and was crying. He, he, he wants to kill him. He wants to kill him. They have to stop. They have to stop. They have to stop. And then the angel was say, stop. I say, oh my God. Abraham. 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 You have killed me. Abraham. God had a heavy mouth to even talk. God said to Abraham, go and kill your son. When he come to say stop, God could not talk. Because what Abraham did, got to the emotions of God. God could not talk. He took an angel to go on the behalf of God. I can imagine the angel also crying. The whole of heaven weeping. What is this thing this guy has done? What is so a human being can do this? Why can't heaven give up their own son? So a human being can do this thing. I imagine the man was crying. And I imagine why God was also crying. I imagine he was looking for his own ram. He was looking for his own sacrifice. Abraham, if you can do it, I won't withhold my own. And then the next verse. Hey, hey, hey. Kadabosh, I feel God here. Go back to verse 12 again. I've not finished something. I want to believe this church is a church that will master worship. Not just in singing, but in laying their life as the object of worship. As the object or as the item used in worship. God wants you to lay your own life down. Lay your resources and all you think you have. That was why this morning I enacted a new policy. I've been doing it here before. I said, if you come into church before worship time, the worship is going on, you will stay outside. Though. Because who we are worshiping is not man. Is his majesty. Is his majesty. Did you see where Abraham told his servant, stay here. I'll go and worship. You don't interrupt worship when it's going on. You don't come into a shrine when sacrifice is going on. If you are not inside the shrine at the time of the sacrifice, you are not coming inside. And when you come into a shrine to offer sacrifice, you come in dressed in the right robe. You come in, that's why you cannot be naked worshipping God. You cannot come dressed anyhow worshipping him. You can't come with, with all kinds of evil thoughts. Worship. That's why you are the first that must be sacrificed. Your everything must go down so that God can be lifted, so that God can be exalted. That is what worship is, most of you don't know. You can't be coming into church late during worship time thinking you're coming to worship man. It's God you're coming. We are doing sacrifice here. It's blood we are shedding during worship. We are shedding our life. For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.